Ainsley. Welcome back to my channel. So I made this video actually a couple days ago and I'm redoing it because I went way into too much detail and it's just a little bit confusing. But today we're going to talk about salt and electrolytes and answer the question of is salt bad for you? We're also just gonna kind of roll with the messy braid because I don't feel like uh, fixing it. So everyone's just gonna have to be cool with that. So within our body, we use positive and negative charges to create action potential, to basically make things happen, to make our muscles contract, to transport things uh, across cell membranes. Uh, a lot of different functions within the body rely on electrolytes for electricity, basically. The negative and the positive ions create that action potential and between them they create energy or charge and that is how a lot of different mechanisms within the body are actually able to occur. If you are someone who follows a low carbohydrate protocol or lifestyle, it's also very important to pay attention to your salt consumption because chances are you are getting even less than you need. Um, I believe that the recommendation right now for Americans is to consume 2,300 milligrams of sodium. Um, if you're on a low carbohydrate diet, that needs to be closer to five grams of sodium. So more than twice as much. Um, and that's simply because when your insulin is low, your body, actually your kidneys kind of flush out water. And with that water, they also um, dump electrolytes. So when we lose water, we lose electrolytes. That's just the way that it works. And the big one there is the sodium. So if you're constantly kind of keeping your insulin low through a ketogenic or a low carbohydrate diet, it's going to be even more important that you're supplementing with electrolytes, that you're salting your water, um, or that you're finding something that works for you, but you're getting that additional sodium into your diet. Uh, another group of people that want to pay attention to this, regardless of whether or not you are keeping your carbohydrates low, is if you are someone who practices intermittent fasting. Um, if you're experimenting with intermittent fasting, if you are a seasoned faster, if you do prolonged fasting, um, you'll probably be familiar with uh, enhanced, um, you know, enhancing your diet with electrolytes, even if that looks like just water and salt. Um, people will find that they can actually fast for very long periods of time when they are consuming adequate water, sodium, magnesium, and potassium. If you are someone that uses a time-restricted feeding window, practices intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting, make sure that you're getting enough salt specifically from you know a good quality source. So a pink Himalayan salt, a uh, sea salt, Redmond's real salt is very popular. Um, I can link that below in the description. I typically use pink salt. Both of those are gonna contain other trace minerals within them as well. Um, it is important if you're someone that, especially if you're someone that doesn't eat any seafood, to make sure to occasionally use a little bit of table salt. Within the US, our table salt is iodinized. Um, a lot of people are iodine deficient, um, and it is very important for thyroid function, particularly for women. Um, so mix that in a little bit, but don't rely solely on table salt because it's not going to provide you with the whole kind of scope of all the other minerals as well. It will just be that sodium chloride plus um, the addition of the iodine. If you love seaweed and you love seafood and you snack on things like that all the time, you're probably okay on iodine. Most of the other minerals we don't actually require in large amounts. Again, but you wanna make sure you're hitting the sodium and to a lesser extent, but a significant extent, um, potassium and magnesium as well. I recommend getting potassium and magnesium from foods whenever possible, but I also do supplement with magnesium at night. I use the Calm Magnesium, um, which I talk about in my sleep video, which I will link somewhere over here or in the description. The last thing I'll say is if you're starting a new lifestyle or diet protocol that is lower carbohydrate, um, you can find a lot of different sources of electrolyte supplements on the market today, and you really wanna pay attention to the quality of the one that you choose. 
I would highly recommend avoiding things like Gatorade, Powerade, um, any of the other aids that are on the market, any of the electrolyte enhanced bottled drinks in bright colors that you see at the grocery store. Um, all of those things are gonna contain usually very high levels of sugar, artificial dyes, colors, a bunch of junk, quite frankly, that you don't need to be putting in your body. And they also, they're advertised and marketed to be high in electrolytes, but quite frankly, they are not. They are very low in electrolytes. When you actually look at the daily requirement for sodium, magnesium, potassium, and other uh, electrolytes, they are in typically in the several hundred to thousands of milligrams. And one of those bottles typically contains like 20 milligrams, 25 maybe. I saw a bottle the other day at the store that had 12 milligrams of magnesium. Um, when I take magnesium at night, I'm, co I'm commonly taking 300 to 500 milligrams. Um, and that's just for one serving. I'm again, not saying that that's my recommended dose for you and for your needs, but it's something to be mindful of. Don't spend $4 on a bright red liquid in a plastic bottle at a grocery store that tells you it's gonna help you with electrolytes, when in reality, the actual electrolyte content in that is marginal. It's, it's barely enough to be put on the label, but they put just enough in there so that they can market it to you and sell it to you as something that helps with hydration and with electrolytes. If you are someone who is looking for something that's quick and convenient on the go and you like that about Gatorade and Powerade, um, I would recommend checking out Element electrolyte packages. Um, I have their subscription service. I've had it for a while now and I love them. Um, they are not a sponsor of this channel. I just really, really like their product. Um, my favorite is their watermelon salt, which they come in this box like this. And it's really cool. Each packet has a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. So it's substantial enough where you're actually getting the electrolytes um, that you require. It's not just you know, a cute little amount for them to legally be able to call it an electrolyte drink. And then they come in these little packets. So you can take your packet, throw it in your bottle of water, and there you go. You have your own electrolyte drink on the go. They come in a bunch of different flavors. I use the chocolate one, which a lot of people think is really weird, but um, the chocolate one is fantastic. If you like salty coffee, you can put it in your coffee in the morning, um, or I actually just mix it with water. Um, it tastes really delicious to me, kind of like a dessert or a treat. Um, but the watermelon one tastes like watermelon sour patch. And it was actually one of my friends that told me that and I didn't believe her and she was right. And if you don't want to spend any money on any kind of electrolyte drink mix, um, I don't blame you. You don't have to. Um, you can make an electrolyte drink at home. Just take some water, put in a pinch of sea salt or pink Himalayan salt, maybe like half a teaspoon, um, quarter teaspoon, something like that. Uh, and I would do that in a big glass of water or a big bottle of water, you know, over, over 20 ounces of water. That way you're not going to taste any of the salt. Put in a squeeze of lemon, um, fresh lemon juice is best, lime juice if you want. I love putting citrus in there. And if you want, you can add a couple drops of a liquid stevia um, to give it a little bit of sweetness. And that will be, there you go, you have an electrolyte drink um, right at home. If you're someone that doesn't mind consuming a little bit of natural sugar, um, coconut water is an excellent source of electrolytes. Um, it has more electrolytes in it than most sports drinks and it's also delicious, um, especially if it's really cold. Just make sure if you're buying a coconut water that you look at the label and you look at the ingredients and make sure that the only ingredient is either coconut water or young coconut water. You don't want watered down coconut water. You don't want coconut water that has added sugar in it. So just be mindful of that. Um, there's always companies that are trying to sneak more garbage into their products. So definitely use your dollar to vote and support the companies that are making the good decisions to give us whole foods and whole ingredients and not fillers and sugars and trash. This video is sponsored by New Lift Science. They have a product called Synactive. 
Lisa and active. Um, and it's actually really interesting. I've been kind of testing this out for the past two months and it's really great for um, muscle recovery, for endurance athletic performance, and um, basically just performance in general, but it's specifically formulated for kind of those endurance athletes, which I am not, I'm not an endurance athlete. So I actually had one of my friends try this out. Um, she is a power builder and she is certainly an athlete. She is also a coach and very, very knowledgeable. Um, she has a fantastic, you know, workout routine and she's much more disciplined than I am. Um, so she was a great person to kind of check in with and test out the product. Both of us thought that using this really supported kind of muscle recovery. So I found when I consumed this ingredient, I was not as tired after the same workload in the gym. So whether I was doing like a really heavy lift or if I was doing, you know, slow, kind of more sustained effort cardio, I didn't feel as fatigued. Um, and actually the studies around this ingredient support that people in the study um, could really push their VO2 max farther. They could also recover quicker after a workout. Um, so if this is something that interests you, definitely check it out. They also make these little shots. Um, so these ones were tablets. This was a sample that I tried. Um, and this is actually a kind of like little, it looks like a five hour energy shot. And um, I tested this guy out intra workout. So in the middle of the workout, um, before and also post workout, I didn't feel that much of a difference. It doesn't hit you like a bunch of caffeine or anything like that. There's no caffeine in it. Um, but I did feel like it gave me a little something extra, um, not in a stimulant way, but in just sort of a strength way. Um, I felt that I could, yeah, I could just do more. I could do more work in the gym. So if you guys are looking into that, you're interested in helping your performance in any way, definitely check them out. I'll link them down below. And thanks again to New Live Science for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, guys, this was a quick one. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over the fact that salt is not bad for you. It's important. It's an important part of your healthy diet. Electrolytes are super important for pretty much every function in the body. Um, so be mindful if you're reducing the processed foods and you're cutting them out completely or you're following a keto diet or you're trying around with low carb or you're cutting out sugar, whatever you're doing, definitely bring back in the salt. Don't avoid the salt. Don't eat a low salt diet. Um, it's horrible advice. If your doctor tells you to eat a low salt diet, um, again, I'm not a doctor, so certainly get a couple opinions there, but I would find a new doctor. Um, there's really no evidence to support that salt is bad for you in any way. It's really kind of an old lie that we kind of keep hearing the echo of. Um, Dr. Is it Dr. Berg? No, it's Dr. Dr. Barry. Um, Dr. Barry calls this the echo of the lie. We used to be told something in nutritional science and it's been disproven, but we still hear it today. Um, the salt is bad for you. It's, it's the echo of the lie that we're still pervasively hearing. So make sure you're getting enough electrolytes, stay hydrated. And as always, if you have any questions, leave a comment, shoot me a message on Instagram or here on YouTube, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, guys. Bye.